The way to think about a buffer manager is that in RAM it manages what's called a buffer pool, which is a set of page-sized extents in memory called frames. And it's the job of the buffer manager to provide the higher levels of the system the illusion that they're addressing and modifying disk pages that exist in RAM. But it's actually going to move pages from the disk into and out of frames in this buffer pool. The API at the two layers is fairly similar. The API to the buffer manager is going to be to read and write pages. And the API to the disk drive was also to read and write pages. But of course, in RAM, things are more addressable once you get them there uh, in terms of addressing specific bytes within the page. So let's look at an example of how this might work. An API request comes into the buffer manager to read a page, page one, from the disk. Now that page is not in the buffer pool right now, so the buffer manager passes that API request onto the disk and fetches page one into an empty frame. And now page one can be manipulated in the buffer pool. Looking at another request that comes in to read page two, we see a similar behavior. Page two is not in the buffer pool right now, so the buffer manager passes on the request to the disk space manager, gets page two loaded into RAM, and it's in its own frame now in RAM. Now, if somebody tries to access page two again, this time the buffer manager says, hey, I already have page two, and it doesn't involve the disk space manager at all, simply returns a pointer to the frame in memory where page two is already located. Now if we get another request, say, uh, re to read page 3, this time again it's not in RAM, so we go to the disk space manager and it transfers it into a buffer frame. 